ankylosing spondylitis and axial spondyloarthritis patients not only have musculoskeletal problems such as backache and uh, peripheral arthritis, etc., but they have all kinds of different comorbidities. And I already touched upon involvement of the eye in the form of iritis and uveitis and in involvement of the gastrointestinal tract in the form of inflammatory bowel disease, skin with psoriasis. But more and more we are finding that the inflammation that these patients have leads to increased risk of cardiovascular disease. There was a big meta-analysis done, and this has been known for a long time about this increased risk of cardiovascular disease in these patients, and several studies have been published. But recently, a meta-analysis was done, and that found out that patients with uh, axial spondyloarthritis have 44% increased risk of heart attacks, 40% increased risk of strokes. They have about 35% increased risk of death. So these are real comorbidities. This actually not only affects the patient's day-to-day -day life and their quality, health-related quality of life, but it reduces the quantity of life. It reduces their life, exp their life uh, duration. Uh, and this is one of the major reasons why we want to treat these patients early and reduce the inflammation with the hope that not only we are going to improve their health-related quality of life, but hopefully we are also changing the natural course of the disease and going to reduce the other comorbidities that these patients are facing. There is a difference how rheumatoid arthritis and psoriatic arthritis affects an individual compared to how external spondyloarthritis affects an individual. The typical lesions in rheumatoid arthritis are erosive damage to the joint. The typical features of psoriatic arthritis is also erosive. They also can have a little bit of new bone formation in psoriatic arthritis. Axial spondyloarthritis patients predominantly have anabolic damage, which means they develop new bone. So they develop syndesmophytes in the spine. They might develop fusion of their spine. They might develop fusion of their sacroiliac joints. There is erosion also in axial spondyloarthritis. In fact, before they develop new bone formation, there is erosion. And then there is this florid new bone formation that occurs in patients with axial spondyloarthritis, which ultimately leads to reduced mobility of the spine. Their neck cannot move and they cannot bend forward. And that leads and adds to their health-related quality of life and reduced spinal function, mobility, et cetera. Another point I want to make is we recently did a study to compare the health-related quality of life in rheumatoid arthritis versus psoriatic arthritis versus ankylosing spondylitis and found out that ankylosing spondylitis patients have more health-related quality of life loss, so more physical disability compared to rheumatoid arthritis and psoriatic arthritis. And I said earlier that between ankylosing spondylitis and non-radiographic non axial spa, the loss of health-related quality of life is quite comparable. In other words, Axial spondyloarthritis in general and non-radiographic axial spine AS have worse health-related quality of life compared to AS and psoriatic arthritis. The burden of the disease of axial spondyloarthritis is quite high. One point which I said earlier was this disease starts in the second or third decade of the patient's life. That is sort of prime time when the patients are going to work. It has been found that in ankylosing spondylitis uh, situation, patients retire at the age of 36. That's the median age, which is terrible because that's the age when people should be really working. About 45% of the patients with ankylosing spondylitis have some disability at work. The biggest impact, the biggest cost to the society and to the person because of this disease is mainly because of loss of productivity. That's the biggest loss. So there is presenteeism, which means the patient shows up at work, but at work, they cannot really work to their full capacity. And if you ask this to the patient, 40 to 60% of the patients, depending on which series you look at, would tell you that they are not able to do their day-to-day, -day. they are there at their job, but they are not able to work to their full capacity. Several patients, 40% of the patients, change their job and go to a different uh, type of job, and in that process, lose their income, um, and lose, they will have to do a job which is probably less physically demanding. Uh, a large percentage of patients become disabled at a younger age. As I said, 36 years can be uh, seen as the average age when these people um, uh, get disability or retire from their work. 
it has also been shown that uh, even day-to-day -day activities, this is outside of their work, just bending down and putting on their socks um, is, Im is impossible. They cannot bend down and pick something. It's very interesting. I have a doctor friend who uh, I was with him at a medical meeting and he said that this morning they slipped this uh, bill under my door into my room and I cannot pick it up. I cannot bend down. I mean, these things that you and I take for granted, they just cannot do. Something fell from his hand and he couldn't pick it up. He had to call the hotel um, bell person to come and pick it up for him. I mean, these are ordinary things. So it's just not the work. It's also day-to-day health-related quality of life suffers in these patients quite dramatically and drastically. And this is when we really have great treatments where we can avoid and prevent all this from happening. So we can treat these patients early and give them better quality of life.